Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Anup Singh. So in today video, we are going to discuss about the fundamental of gas turbine engines for aircraft power plant. Actually, this is the chapter number one of subject aircraft propulsion two. You can find out this subject in aeronautical engineering program. So those candidate and students are. Uh, aspirant in aeronautical engineering or study in the aeronautical engineering you can this video is very useful so specially you can find out this subject air car propulsion 2 in fifth semester and those uh, student doing uh, aerospace engineering so the subject aerospace propulsion 2 in fifth semester so before starting this video of this lecture I want to clear very one important point to everyone. Whatever we are going to discuss in this chapter number one, that is mostly overview of all the topics of chapter number one, fundamental of gas turbine engines. If you want detail or brief about any topics, so you can let me know separately in the comment box of this video so i am going to make a, another video about that for example somebody want more detail about turbojet engine so i am going to prepare or produce one video related to turbojet engine and also i am going to discuss in detail about that topic but in today video we are going to discuss only the overview of chapter number one it is uh, having you can find out the some detail also so don't worry about that so let's start of this chapter number one of aircraft propulsion 2 that is fundamental of gas turbine engine so before starting this chapter first try to understand why we are learning about gas turbine engine so that is the first question then we can move what is gas turbine engine and why and uh, where we are using so that is the uh, next topic so first question is arise so many of the students are wondering why we are using only gas turbine engine why we are not approaching uh, positive displacement engine positive displacement engine means uh, reciprocating engine piston engine so there will be a some reason what i have mentioned here so you can see here i have mentioned a very important point that is a uh, that is basically advantages of gas turbine engine the first one is that reduction weight reduction of 70 percent if you compare positive displacement engine so the weight you can find out that is 70 percent reduction this is a typical value if you go through the books so you can find out this typical value and second simplicity actually gas turbine engine is very simple as compared to the uh, piston engine or you can say reciprocating engine there is a numbers of component mechanical component you can find out in case of uh, uh, reciprocating engine so the gas turbine engine is very simple the third point is reduce manning requirement means the maintenance you can find out is very less then next point is about the quicker response time means the you can find out the, all the mechanism in the gas turbine engine is respond very quickly so quicker response time faster acceleration and decelerations of each component of gas turbine engine and modular modular replacement suppose there is a component main component or secondary component or auxiliary component of the gas turbine engine you can easily replace with a new component so it's a modular one if i am comparing to the uh, reciprocating engine that is very difficult task in case of reciprocating engine so that's the reason it's a very modular engine gas turbine engine is a modular engine and also you can find out let less vibration produced by the gas turbine engine as compared to the reciprocating engine in reciprocating engine there is a numbers of rod and piston mechanism so because of that it produce more vibration and the last one is more economical so obviously it's gas turbine engine is more economical that's the reason we are using in aero engine 
so this is the main advantage is point of gas turbine engine that's the reason we are using in our air car propulsion system but guys this comparison this all the points is only the comparison with reciprocating reciprocating engine here i am not mentioned anywhere but you can take this point this comparison or this advantage is is compared to the reciprocating engine that is positive displacement engine because in coming of the slide i am going to show you again advantages and disadvantages of gas turbine engine as compared to steam engine and other types of engine okay so reciprocating engine is only not a competitor steam engine and other types of engines are also competitor understand so that we are going to see later <coughs> now next <coughs> about the introduction first i am going to uh, tell you about the gas turbine engine so in this slide i am going to brief you about uh, what is the gas turbine engine and uh, what are the primary components of gas turbine engine if you see in this figure uh, what i have mentioned here so you can find out there are five primary components five primary components of gas turbine engine if you see here the first one is about called intake that is also called diffuser then second component is compressor you can find out numbers of blade that is a compressor okay we are going to discuss later which types of compressor okay so that is a chapter number i think chapter number 2 so that we are going to discuss in chapter number 2 now the third component that is primary component combustion chamber so combustion chamber we can find out easily here then next uh, primary component that is turbine and the last one is exhaust means exhaust means nozzle understand this one is nozzle so the exhaust gas coming into the atmosphere and it produce the thrust so here very simple uh, uh, you can recognize all the primary components with the help of this uh, figure so it's a very simple and i hope so you can understand also that's the reason gas turbine engine is also called a rotatory internal combustion engine because we are doing the combustion but that is internally understand that's the reason is called internal combustion engine but one point is added attached that is rotatory why rotatory because gas turbine engine possess compressor and turbine why i am explaining uh, in uh, very small small taps because you can find out this silly questions in the interview that the interviewer is going to ask to the candidate why the gas turbine engine is called rotatory internal combustion engine so student should be or candidate should be aware about that because gas turbine engine possess rotary component plus it possess internal combustion system that's the reason is called rotatory internal combustion engine now the next is about you can find out the the numbers of sorry numbers of combustion uh, compressor sorry compressor and turbine but you can find out combustion chamber which is placed between the compressor and turbine the combustion the, the gas turbine engine using the gas as a working medium by which heat energy is converted into the mechanical work or you can say the thrust what we are calculating understand and gas is produced in the engine by the combustion of the fuel in the combustion chamber so we are going to discuss later the what is the function of all the primary components of the jet engine or you can say gas turbine engine here we are calling directly jet engine is called gas turbine engine because we are using the gas turbine engine in the jet engine understand so don't confuse sir what is jet engine and what is uh, gas turbine engine both are same but one thing is very important the application of jet engine is air car propulsion system but application of gas turbine engine you can find out the numbers of applications that we i am going to show you in the next slide so this is the primary components and uh, let's see we are going to discuss also the function of primary components also the diffuser the first component is diffuser that is primary component that the function of diffuser to decelerate the flow but to decelerate the flow with the minimum total pressure loss that is the main function of diffuser and also it balancing the aerodynamic flow means uniform flow because the next component is compression 
compressor possesses number of blades so obviously it's required uniform flow so the diffuser playing a very good role it maintaining the <coughs> uniform flow also at the end of at the exit of the diffuser that is the entry of the compressor so compressor does the work very well so the function of the compressor is to compress the flow compress the flow that is our main requirement because we required the compressed highly compressed uh, air in the combustion chamber why we required that we are uh, discussing later first try to understand the function of the compressor is to compress the flow at at required compression ratio we are not randomly compressed understand our suppose uh, we our required compression ratio is 6 is to 1 so we are reaching up to the 6 is to 1 we are not going to beyond the 6 is to 1 like 12 is to 1 16 is to 1 so we are going to use the compressor utilizing the compressor up to our required compression ratio and that compressed air we are going to send into the combustion chamber now the next component is combustion chamber the function of the combustion chamber to raise the required temperature that's the reason we are increasing the pressure value understand by the thermodynamic uh, process we know suppose we have a highly pressurized air and we are injecting the fuel in that highly pressurized air so the rise of the temperature is very very high that's the reason the combustion chamber is successfully converted or successfully increasing the uh, temperature of the gases that is our required but sometime what happen the temperature of the gases is very high is go very high so that is very harm and that is going to affect directly to the turbine blade that is the next component so turbine blade is going to affect uh, that is next component this one so wo <coughs> that is not called permissible limit understand so that's the reason what we are going to do we are going to do we are going to provide the uh, cooling of the turbine blade that is the next uh, means that is the other topic you can find out in the turbine cooling of the turbine blades and the second thing second approach is that we are going to raise the temperature up to the permissible limit of the turbine blade material so this is the two steps we are following otherwise the cooling of the turbine blade is enough to maintain the temperature now the next component is about <coughs> turbine so guys the turbine the function of the turbine is to expand the flow to expand the flow but the design of the blade and uh, the volume or mass flow rate of the gases it is not effectively convert the uh, convert into the kinetic energy 100% kinetic energy so you can say in very simple word that turbine blade or turbine expand the gases expand the gases and the residual residual potential energy is left that is going to convert into the kinetic energy that is going to does by the nozzle so whatever the, the residual potential energy is left by the turbine that work is going to done by the nozzle so the shape of the nozzle that is a last co primary component of the gas turbine engine so the function of the nozzle to expand the flow very smoothly and it's uh, convert the residual uh, potential energy into the kinetic energy so you can find out 100% conversion into the kinetic energy of the flow and the highly accelerated or highly uh, 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 velocity of the flow leave the engine into the atmosphere at very high speed so that create a re uh, uh, reaction force in the opposite direction that's the reason the whole body of the aircraft move move in the forward direction that is called thrust so that reaction force is called thrust so guys this is very simple so this is the function of all the primary components i hope so you guys are understand again we are going to discuss it is very simple okay now the next slide is about working principle how this uh, gas turbine engine is work understand so 
is very simple the i am going to use the uh, picture of back because this engine whatever you are you are seeing this this also called a gas turbine engine but this is the types of the gas turbine engine that we are going to discuss in classification of jet engine that is the next slide of this uh, uh, lecture so that we are going to discuss later but here you can see the this basic picture i am going to explain you very simple this one what is the working principle very simple the air from the atmosphere first uh, enter into the diffuser understand whatever i have explained the function of all the primary components that is the working principle it is first enter into the diffuser diffuser deaccelerate the flow reduce the velocity of the flow and also send the required amount of the mass flow rate with minimum total pressure loss of the flow to the compressor so that is the function of the diffuser the next is compressor compressor take the required amount of the flow and convert into the required compression ratio means required pressure ratio so that pressurized air enter into the combustion chamber in the combustion chamber we are injecting the fuel into the compressed air and doing the mixture and doing the combustion process Uh, with the help of combustion process we raise the temperature up to our required or you can say design value or design uh, design uh, temperature rise that temperature uh, that uh, uh, gas highly heated gas is going to strike to the turbine turbine blade expand the gases highly heated gases into the uh, main flow so after that the flow is the means gas of the flow is passes to the nozzle and it's expand optimally or you can say very smoothly so the flow of high velocity leave the engine into the atmosphere at very very high speed and it produce reaction force in the opposite direction so the whole body is move in the forward direction so that reaction force is called thrust understand is very simple so this is the working principle what every candidate should be understand so this is the working principle now next is advantages and disadvantages of the gas turbine engine so now guys this advantages we have i here i am comparing to the steam turbine and also to diesel uh, propulsion system understand so this is the advantages the first advantages you can see as compared to the steam engine and diesel propulsion system greater power for a given size and weight means whatever the output whatever the output that is very high as compared to the steam engine high reliable means whatever the component we are using in the gas turbine engine is very mechanically high reliable understand mechanical reliable see we are not going to use any mechanical component randomly because it is a aircraft engine any problem in the aircraft engine means that is a big problem of our of our life so the all whatever we are using the mechanical component that is very and highly reliable long life that is obviously the long life is important but modular gas turbine engine is modular so we can change very easily any component and make the life of whole engine very long more convenient operation obviously whatever the required operation that is does very smoothly engine startup time reduced from 4 hours to 2 minutes means the whatever the starting of any engine see uh, the gas turbine engine is not self starting engine obviously we required some uh, auxiliary power auxiliary power unit with the help of that we are go going to provide the torque of the axle shaft that is connected to the turbine and compressor first we are going to rotate the compressor and turbine at the required temp required rpm so that we are going to does with the help of uh, during the starting so it's take up only the 2 minutes gas turbine engine take only 2 minutes to start up the whole engine so that is very very good then less area required for storage of fuel then less maintenance cost obviously simple construction no need of boiler condenser as as compared to steam engine and diesel engine then kerosene prefined benzene and powder coal like cheaper fuel we are cheaper fuel used 
then the less requirement of water can be installed uh, during the operation less pollution and easy handling so guys this is the main advantages and you can find out only and only in this ppt you can't find out easily this all the points i am going to give this surety this is a very what i have find out after the long of search this is a very important point and also is askable point you can go in interview this is the if you substitute this point is very nice is a acceptable now we are going to move for disadvantages this advantage is that manufacturing a turbine blade is much difficult and costly i already explained you why it is difficult because we are providing the cooling cooling method and cooling scheme also in the turbine blade so we are providing external cooling and internal cooling so obviously the manufacturing of a turbine blade is very costly and very difficult also costly means we are using the very good alloys super alloys we are using in the uh, turbine blade material because the directly combustion gas is hit to the uh, turbine blade so that is very uh, means crucial process so that's the reason the material of the turbine turbine blade is very costly and also uh, designing of turbine blade is uh, very complex because there is a numbers holes numbers of holes internally and externally we are created to provide the cooling effects now the for same power output gas turbine engine produce five times more exhaust gas as compared to the ic engine see guys this is a very important point so it produce more exhaust as compared to five times more exhaust then <clears throat> then third point is gas turbine blades required a special cooling system that we already discussed that's the reason manufacturing of the turbine blade is uh, much difficult and costly then and a lower thermal efficiency this is a typical value guys this types of things you can find out only in gate exam lower thermal efficiency as 15 to 20 percent in the gas turbine engine as 25 to 30 percent in ic engine so you can find out ic engine is very uh, very very good uh, value as compared to the gas turbine engine uh, in case of thermal efficiency therefore the gas turbine engine unit has a low thermal efficiency because 66% of the power developed what we are developing the power in order to use the uh, compressor that is less understand now the next point is high frequency noise from the compressor is objectable now okay some uh, during the operation you can find out because we are using the multi stage in the compressor that is called axial flow compression so the flow is passes through the multiple blades in the series so you can find out some noise during the operation so that is mentioned the high frequency noise uh, is op, uh, is uh, re, is marked during the operation of the compressor then last one is required special metals and alloys to cost part of the cost part of the turbines because we already know the rpm means rpm or you can say speed of the gas turbine engine is near about 40000 to 1 lakh rpm that is a very very high guys very very high and the operating temperature is goes 1100 uh, uh, to 12 12600 degree celsius so guys this is a very high thermal load axial load centrifugal load you can consider that's the reason the requirement of special alloys and special met uh, metals in the case of component of gas turbine engine that is also a disadvantage is because this types of metals or materials is very very costly understand so this is about the disadvantages and i hope so you guys are understand if you find out some difficulty you can comment in the comment box i am going to give the answer then now the next topic is about uh, gas turbine power pr- uh, power plant application means uh, where is the application of uh, gas turbine engine that is uh, also very askable question to the candidate so major application you can find out that air ka propulsion system electric uh, electric power generation so you can find out easily in that area where the gas turbine engine 
are using okay so this is the major application but if you go for minor so you can find out industrial process marine propulsion system okay so application of the gas turbine uh, easily find out in the case of industrial application also now we are going to talk about breton cycle see guys before starting this topic breton cycle first uh, i am going to clear one point see the breton cycle uh, here i am going to take that this topic is very important breton cycle is nothing but air standard cycle it is also called constant pressure air standard cycle constant pressure because we are maintaining the constant pressure uh, at uh, at the time of heat addition and heat uh, rejection understand the breton cycle is only the cycle we are using in the uh, gas turbine engine understand so whatever the explanation we are going to see about the breton cycle that is our gas turbine engine cycle okay so don't confuse uh, what is gas turbine engine cycle and what is uh, breton cycle both are same because we are using the breton cycle in the gas turbine engine cycle that's a reason it is called gas turbine engine cycle sometime this types of question and complexity is created in the case of gate exam understand so this types of uh, technical words you should be aware very simply because it's create a, a miscommunications in the theoretical knowledge understand so it's very simple again i am repeating breton cycle we are using as a air standard cycle in the gas turbine engine that's the reason gas turbine engine is also called breton cycle understand gas turbine engine cycle is also called breton cycle so here whatever the process and components we are going to see that is our gas turbine engine cycle understand so <clears throat> uh, here one question is uh, i am going to give to all the candidates and student uh, one homework see here we are talking about the breton cycle but uh, we know as uh, as we aware in the thermodynamic engineering subject we learn numbers of cycle like carnot cycle diesel cycle otto cycle uh, so why we are using only breton cycle in the gas turbine engine cycle so guys this is homework for all the students and all the candidates i am going to explain you this but not in this lecture i am going to explain you in the next of the lecture series okay but i want this answer because this is also a question this question is askable frequent askable question in the interview and also in the gate exam and you can find out any entrance exam also so breton cycle why only we are using the breton cycle why we are not using otto cycle otto cycle is also very nice Uh, we can use as a air standard cycle in the gas turbine engine but here we are only following breton cycle so guys go through it this is uh, your homework now we are going to see this topic <coughs> in this cycle we are using as a uh, fluid as a air because in case of aero engine obviously we are following the fluid medium is air <coughs> so here you can find out in this figure this one uh, this uh, figure in this figure we are assuming in the breton cycle there are three components compressor combustion chamber and turbine and this whole cycle this is a one cycle guys this is a one cycle this cycle you can find out open cycle it is not connected inlet to outlet understand that's the reason it's called open cycle understand so breton cycle is open cycle gas turbine engine we are going to see the next slide for closed cycle and also we are going to see the ideal cycle so basically what we are learning in the theory that is ideal cycle understand that we are discuss later first see here the three component we are assuming in the breton cycle but you aware about that in gas turbine engine there is a five component so in this case we are ignoring diffuser we are ignoring nozzle understand only for understanding purpose of breton cycle so here we are ignoring diffuser and nozzle only we are considering compressor combustion chamber and turbine that's it so in this case we are uh, thinking the air is coming from the atmosphere enter into the compressor compressor compress the flow and send into the combustion chamber means same repetition what we already seen the operating principle of the gas turbine engine same we are doing but only thing is what this is a open cycle the exhaust gas leave the turbine 
and throw out into the atmosphere that's a reason it's classified open cycle but one thing is very important gas turbine engine usually operates on open cycle you can see in the aircraft engine the air the air from the atmosphere enter into the engine after that all the process passes through the diffuser compressor combustion chamber turbine and nozzle passes through all the process then you can find out at the end the exhaust gas is leave into the atmosphere so again fresh air is enter and again all the process is repeated understand we are not uh, recirculating the same fluid what we are doing in the industries understand whenever you can find out the breton cycle you can find out open cycle and close cycle both but in our aero engine we are following the open breton cycle understand not closed breton cycle closed breton cycle we are generally using in industries because in industries we are recirculating the same fluid throughout all the process we are not changing the fluid understand fluid in the industries may be steam is may be some fluid some liquid understand that is depend but in the aircraft our fluid is air so whenever you can see any theory any numerical you can find out the medium you can mentioned air so let's see this uh, breton cycle is a closed cycle so in this case closed cycle you can find out there is a compressor combustion chamber turbine and heat redu re reduction means rejection sorry with the help of heat exchanger we are rejecting the heat and we are cooling down rejecting the heat means cooling down the temperature of the exhaust gas means i, I am going to explain you at the starting so you guys are understand how we are using this closed breton cycle so first the fluid enter into the compressor and compressed air is entered into the combustion chamber in combustion chamber we are adding the heat with the help of combustion process then highly heated gas is passes through the turbine turbine expand the flow but after the expansion you can find out the temperature is very high understand very very high so before entering the compressor obviously we required a low temperature so with the help of this heat exchanger we are reducing the temperature of the flow understand you aware you if you uh, know in the thermodynamic engineering we learned suppose cool air suppose air is cool and passes the compressor so compress is work very efficiently to compress the flow understand to compress the because molecules are very very near all the molecules is very near the distance between the molecules of the fluid particles is very near so it is very easy to compress so when the fluid particle is very near when the fluid is very cool that's the reason we are using this heat exchanger only to cool down the flow so we are done less we are ap applying less input to the compressor to get same output but here you can find out we are using the second heat exchanger that is combustion chamber we are heating the flow the reason is that we want to raise the high temperature understand we want to raise the high temperature and passes to the turbine because in the turbine we want to <coughs> we want to what we want to expand the flow by thermodynamic engineering we know this knowledge if highly heated gas is passes through the uh, uh, turbine obviously it does the work very smoothly it expand the flow very smoothly because the fluid particles flow particles is very very far so expansion is very easy it required very less effort to expand the flow very efficiently and optimally understand so that's the reason so this is called closed breton cycle and this is we are using in the industry in the case of industry for power or electric generation or also we are using some other purposes in the industrial process understand but in case of aircraft we are using which one we are using this one the breton cycle ideal cycle for gas turbine engine but i not ideal actual but here we are learning about the ideal because all the theory is based upon the ideal theory understand once we are learn the ideal theory then we are going to approach real theory many of the students are asking the question sir why we are learning the ideal theory why we are not approaching the actual the problem is that guys 
for in ideal theory we are assuming lots of we are neglecting lots of things like losses and there is so many things are there the flow is inviscid incompressible irrotational means we are assuming ideal fluid passes through the ideal cycle so there is a no losses only we are whatever the we are giving the input we are getting the output very simple so that types of theory we are learning in the case of ideal cycle and that fundamental and basics we are applying in actual cycle so first we want to this otherwise all the losses if you are going to means we are assuming the real condition so you need to consider all the losses so that is a uh, very complex and students and students also not going to understand during the class that's the reason we are teaching breton cycle ideal breton cycle but in this case we are teaching closed ideal breton cycle but closed cycle because we we want to do some numericals very smoothly we want to derive the thrust equation very smoothly understand so there is no complexity you can find out during the derivation of thrust equation during the derivation of uh, work uh, work done by the compressor work work consume sorry work absorbing by the compressor work done by the turbine heat addition heat rejection so all the formulas is very simple because we are assuming ideal condition if you are assuming actual condition so you need to substitute all the uh, practical assumptions or practical values that is difficult to uh, do in the equations understand so here you can find out 1 to 2 is the isentropic compression 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat addition 3 to 4 is the isentropic expansion and last 4 to 1 that is constant pressure heat rejection so all the students is very important whenever you explain the breton cycle must draw the pv diagram and ts diagram pv diagram is a pressure versus volume diagram and ts diagram is called a temperature versus entropy diagram it is also called enthalpy versus entropy diagram understand so this all the four process is executed in the steady flow device thus they should be analyzed as the steady flow process that's the reason uh, breton cycle is called a steady flow cycle so <clears throat> this is about the breton cycle now we are going to move for efficiency that is important adiabatic efficiency now the topic is a uh, breton cycle ideal cycle thermal efficiency understand we are following ideal cycle don't forget okay so the ideal cycle efficiency of the breton cycle is eta is equal to 1 minus 1 upon rp raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma okay rp is called pressure ratio p2 by p1 pressure ratio is what pressure ratio of across the compressor p2 by p1 but this is ideal cycle so don't for means uh, you can assume that p2 by p1 is equal to p3 by p4 understand but this is not po possible in case of actual cycle but here we are assuming because the cycle itself is a ideal cycle so it's a very simple calculation just apply the energy equation that is q in minus q out plus w in minus w out w in means compressor work and w out means turbine work is equal to h exit minus h inlet means enthalpy temperature you can consider enthalpy at the inlet and enthalpy at the exit and the heat input value with the help of this ts diagram that is cp t3 minus t2 and q output q out is a cp t4 minus so very simple use the uh, q input q input equation and q output equation that is q1 and q2 your depends upon your notation different book different notation or understand and wc this one is wc and uh, this one is wt wt very simple so this equations just use the very simple one one minute i am going to erase this all the points very simple use the heat in uh, heat addition and heat uh, rejection formula with the help of this ts diagram and use the isentropic relation this is called isentropic relation understand this isentropic relation you you can learn in the fluid mechanics otherwise thermodynamics also so substitute this all the value 
in in case of efficiency formula very basic formula everyone is understand w net upon q in this is a very basic formula of any device you guys already learn in the thermodynamics those are not not done so my request just go through the uh, uh, gas power cycle in the thermodynamic engineering book understand very basic formula eta is equal to w net upon q1 w net upon q1 q1 means heat addition so just use this formula and substitute all the values you can finally get efficiency is equal to 1 minus 1 upon rp raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma okay so don't confuse what is gamma gamma means specific heat ratio that is gamma is equal to c is equal to cp by cv that you guys already learn in the thermodynamic process so don't forget what is gamma gamma for air we are assuming 1.4 and for gases we are assuming for gases we are assuming 1.33 okay this is a typical value and cp value you guys know cv value so whenever you are doing this breton cycle now my suggestion to everyone just go through the formula of all the thermodynamic parameter like gamma cp cv uh, understand and capital r universal gas constant so you should aware about all the typical values of this parameter then you can go to do the numericals in the exam related to breton cycle because many in, in exam you can find out many times exam uh, paper setter or examiner is not going to give this value understand so this is important and this is called thermal efficiency of the breton cycle but which cycle ideal cycle not actual cycle so this is very simple and you can find out lots of numericals in the gate exam also on the basis of this formula and also this formula is also important and sometime you can find out one and two questions i find out in few papers this equation this is called energy balance equation of breton cycle and breton cycle you know that is called steady flow cycle so remember this one now the next slide is about actual gas turbine cycle or you can say actual breton cycle both are same here why i am going to show you this slide because very important is this ts diagram whenever you are going to show you the actual condition and ideal condition this is very important this two i am going to show you again uh, this two curve is very important this curve this one this is compressor so guys in the case of compression you can find out one straight line this straight line this straight line this straight line is the ideal condition 1 to 2s but 1 to 2a 1 to 2a is what 1 to 2a is actual curve why it is diverted in, in narrow side because there is a numbers of losses we are assuming the actual condition and you know in actual condition there will be a losses कुछ तो कुछ एनर्जी लॉस होगा दैट्स अ रीजन इट इज नॉट गोइंग स्ट्रेट लाइन इट्स गोइंग लिटल बिट डाइवर्ट अंडरस्टैंड सो वन टू टू वन टू टू एस दिस इज अडियल आइडियल वन बट इज गोइंग नैरो इट्स एक्चुअल वन सिमिलरली इन द केस ऑफ टर्बाइन सो दैट्स अ रीजन विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस टी एस डायग्राम यू कैन लर्न अ लॉट्स सम प्रेशर ड्रॉप्स बिकॉज ऑफ हीट एडिशन एंड हीट रिजेक्शन दैट्स अ रीजन दिस curve it is go in this way understand so <clears throat> this is a losses and actual in heat input heat input into the compressor is more and actual work output from the turbine is less because of irreversibility or frictional effect this is a actual parameters actual affecting parameters understand because of that because of irreversibility and frictional that's the reason i told you we are learning first ideal cycle and then we are going to approach uh, practical or real cycle because of this so devi deviation of actual compressor and turbine behaviors from ideal isentropic behavior can be accounted by utilizing the isentropic efficiency of the turbine so with the help of this uh, actual and ideal condition we are determining the thermal efficiency or you can say isentropic efficiency of turbine and compressor very simple guys is formula is given 
but guys how to remember this formula you can find out numbers of questions many times one and two questions you can find out on basis of this formula the efficiency this is called isentropic efficiency try to understand there is a two things isentropic and adiabatic so many of the students are confused sir adiabatic efficiency kabhi aa jata hai kabhi isentropic efficiency aa jata hai hai kya dono ek hai no guys both are not same both are different आइजेंट्रॉपिक इफिशियंसी वी आर कंसिडरिंग इन द केस ऑफ आइडियल साइकिल आइडियल साइकिल में हम आइजेंट्रॉपिक इफिशियंसी एज्यूम करते बट इन केस ऑफ एक्चुअल एक्चुअल साइकिल इन केस ऑफ एक्चुअल साइकिल वी आर एज्यूमिंग वॉट वी आर एज्यूमिंग एडियाबेटिक कंडीशन वी आर एज्यूमिंग सो डेट इज कॉल्ड एडियाबेटिक इफिशियंसी सो मैनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आई फाइंड आउट कन्फ्यूज कि सर वॉट इज एडियाबेटिक इफिशियंसी वॉट इज आइजेंट्रॉपिक इफिशियंसी you are taking you are considering the ideal cycle of the breton cycle so take isentropic condition isentropic understand otherwise it if it is real so considered adiabatic so first i am going to show you if it is efficiency of compressor so write down efficiency of compressor is equal to ideal ideal work upon actual work ideal work upon actual work guys sorry here i am not able to write because my pen is very small so very simple again i am repeating efficiency of the compressor is equal to ideal work upon actual work so with the help of this ts diagram you can easily define what is ideal and what is actual so see here here written already eta c is equal to ideal work upon actual work means h to s minus h1 if you see here h to s minus h1 is called ideal one but h 2a minus h1 that is called actual one understand but in case of turbine you can find out vice versa inverse ideal actual work upon ideal work actual work upon ideal work in in case of turbine you can find out the definition actual actual work upon ideal work so you can see this formula in the case of this h3 minus h4 a that is actual and upon h3 minus h4 s that is ideal simple so whenever you are going to draw the form uh, ts diagram follow that one but your nomenclature of the uh, ts diagram is important in different book different notation in the ts diagram so guys follow one book my suggestion of all the candidates and student follow one book once you are going to preparing for gate exam then you can follow the uh, two to three books or four books whatever but first uh, read follow the one book make sure that uh, book is a reference book and after that uh, once you get the confidence then you can uh, refer the other and other books and understand is very simple now the topic is about improvement of gas turbine engine so guys now there is a improvement this is a very new topic improvement of the gas turbine engine performance so obviously we required some improve improvement improvement of the gas turbine engine or you can say improvement of breton cycle performance that is also a right word breton cycle uh, performance or you can say gas turbine performance so the earlier gas turbine engine during the 1940s to 1959 find out only limited use despite their versatility and their ability to burn, burn a variety of fuels because its thermal efficiency was only about 17% effort to improve the cycle efficiency are concentrated into the three areas means in if you see in the history we are Uh, we find out to improve the, the gas turbine efficiency or uh, sorry gas turbine performance or you can say breton cycle performance we can find that we have successfully increased the thermal efficiency that is the performance parameter that is about 15, uh, 17% but we are not able to uh, improve the cycle efficiency that is called thermal efficiency so that's the reason we are nowadays we are using this three method to improve both thermal efficiency and work output understand so the first method is regeneration method second is reheating method and third one is intercooling method 
so this method we are going to see one by one uh, in detail with the help of diagram also so let's see so now the topic is a breton cycle with uh, regeneration understand breton cycle with regeneration so in this case is very simple explanation i am going to give i am not going to uh, uh, tell you about the complexity is very simple method regeneration method is very simple method so first i am going to explain you see in regeneration method try to understand and listen very carefully regeneration method is a method to utilizing the part of heat part of heat of exhaust gas of the nozzle whatever the exhaust passes through the nozzle leave the nozzle so that uh, exhaust is going to waste because in the case of aircraft uh, in the closed cycle uh, we are uh, with the help of heat uh, uh, exchanger we are reducing the we are rejecting the heat understand so to waste that energy in the regeneration method we are utilizing that energy heat energy so in regeneration method again i am repeating in regeneration method we are utilizing the part of heat of exhaust gas of the nozzle to heat the flow of the compressed air to heat the flow of compressed air that is entering into the combustion chamber means whatever the flow enter into the uh, combustion chamber before entering that flow we are utilizing the part of heat of exhaust gas of the nozzle and heat the uh, main flow of the compressed flow of the uh, gas turbine engine then the flow whatever the get the heated that is enter into the combustion chamber understand you can see this figure i am going to zoom this figure so you guys are understand so it's a uh, very simple if you see this figure so is uh, you can recognize so in this figure you can easily understand what i am explaining we are utilizing this part of heat energy this part of heat energy this is the exhaust of the uh, sorry this this is uh, this is the exhaust of the turbine no, uh, sorry we are ignoring the no diffuser and uh, nozzle in the breton cycle so here the exhaust of the uh, turbine we are using to heat the this flow this flow you know the flow is passes through the compressor and enter into the nozzle i am going to erase this all the point so it is enter into the uh, combustion chamber so this part we are heating and we are utilizing the part of heat of the flow this one so this is called regeneration method means whatever the um, this energy we are going to waste with help of reheat generator here is a heat exchanger is there so with the help of heat exchanger we are rejecting the heat energy so wasting of that energy we are utilizing this energy to heat up this flow so we required very less heat we required very less heat to provide into the combustion chamber means directly you can say we are injecting less fuel we are injecting less fuel we are injecting less fuel in the combustion chamber to raise the required temperature because the gas is or the air of the flow enter into the combustion ch chamber is already heated some temperature so we required very less fuel to do the combustion and raise that temperature that is our required temperature understand so that is called regeneration method but one thing is very important here i am going to show you the point the thermal efficiency of the breton cycle increase due to the regeneration method but since less fuel is used for the same output means we required less less fuel to raise the temperature what i have explained that is called a regeneration method now with the in the case of regeneration method one is very important that is affecting the thermal efficiency we are in, we are using the regeneration method of, for improving the performance but in performance which parameter we are improving which performance parameter is there that is thermal efficiency and work output but here in case of the regeneration method we find out some factors are affecting which factors the ratio to the minimum to maximum temperature and pressure ratio these two factors is affecting understand 
बट रीजनरेशन इज मोस्ट इफेक्टिव एट अ लोअर प्रेशर रेशियो एंड स्मॉलर मिनिमम टू टेम्परेचर रेशियो मीन्स वी आर ऑल्सो कंपनसेटिंग द फैक्टर एफेक्टिंग पैरामीटर्स सो इन दिस वे यू आर एबल टू इम्प्रूव द थर्मल इफिशियंसी विद द हेल्प ऑफ रीजनरेशन मैथड अंडरस्टैंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सेकेंड मैथड दैट इज कॉल्ड रीहीटर मीन्स री हीट मैथड और यू कैन से री हीटिंग मैथड सो वॉट वी आर डूइंग इन द री हीट मैथड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस केस वी आर यूजिंग we are using numbers of we are using numbers i am going to zoom this ts diagram so you guys are understand we are going to use num two stage or two so not a stage two types of turbine in reheating method we are going to use two turbine this part is turbine and this part is compressor this part is compressor and this part is turbine but you can find out there is a two curve two curve means two turbine why we are using this two turbine in the reheating very simple guys is very very simple because we want to increase the work output means the output we want to increase net output that is called turbine output so we are dividing the work whatever the burden the single turbine is taking that is going to reduce by with the help of a multiple turbine understand so reheater is the heat exchanger that increase the power output if you see here is already written reheater is a heat exchanger that increase the power output without increasing the maximum operating temperature means suppose there is a second method also if your temperature whatever is rise in the combustion chamber this combustion chamber i am going to erase this one whatever the rise of this combustion this temperature suppose i am able to increase the tem uh, temperature of the combustion chamber so easily the net output of the turbine is increases understand but i am going to increase this temperature so we required more fuel fuel jada lagega fuel is required very high so it is not cost effective understand so that's the reason we are going to use this two turbine in order to increase output output badhane ke liye humne do turbine use kiya hai so iske wajah se fuel zyada consume nahi hoga temperature ko badhane ke liye because there is a second method is also available to increase the temperature to get the high output but hum kyu badhaye why we are going to increase the temperature we have a second method also to use the two turbine understand so in this method we are going to use the two turbine but guys in this case the there is a one problem what problem we are successfully increase the work output hum kya bada rahe output bada rahe output bada rahe but what about the efficiency efficiency decreases why decreases see here <clears throat> the decrease is the reason is that we are using the two uh, turbine because of that it's increase the uh, sorry uh, the reheater alone cannot be justify because the thermal efficiency and it does not increase <coughs> the thermal efficiency you guys already know we required what what is the formula of the thermal efficiency very basic formula that is that is one minute i am going to remove if is basic efficiency formula w net upon heat addition but here we are finding we are the whatever the net is increases but whatever the heat addition we are decreases understand so without regeneration method we can't increase the thermal efficiency in the reheat method so that is called reheating method similarly similarly you can find out in the intercooling method if i am going to zoom this ts diagram in the intercooling method we are using two types of compressor in x and only single turbine understand vice versa what we are already seen in the heat exchanger so guys here we are increasing we are reducing the compressor work understand we are reducing the compressor work so multiple compression with intercooling improve the thermal efficiency of the compression means uh, sorry uh, efficiency of the compression process and breton cycle with intercooling use two or more compression stage with one or more intercooling so what happen the power requirement of the compression reduces means whatever the power whatever the input is required is reduces 
so what happen if it is reduces so we required less effort so but in this case the capital cost to reduce the internal compression alone cannot be justified we required regeneration method to improve the thermal efficiency that's the reason guys the last slide i have mentioned that is that is or breton cycle with all method means intercooling method reheating method and regeneration method so guys समझो एक बात समझो विदा इंटरकूलिंग 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 एंड रीहीट मेथड इट इंक्रीज द वर्क आउटपुट एंड इफिशियंसी बट विदाउट रीजनरेशन इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल दैट्स अ रीजन हियर इज मेंशन इंटरकूलिंग एंड रीहीटिंग ऑलवेज डिक्रीज द थर्मल इफिशियंसी अनलेस एकड बाय द रीजनरेशन मेथड हमेशा ऑलवेज यू रिक्वायर्ड रीजनरेशन मेथड accompanied in order to increase the thermal efficiency otherwise thermal efficiency decreases the reason we require why therefore in the gas turbine engine power plant intercooling and reheating always used in the conjunction of regeneration method because regeneration method increase the thermal efficiency understand and intercooling and reheating method increase the net output understand सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो कि हम कभी भी अकेले यूज नहीं कर सकते बट गाइज वन थिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द इंपॉर्टेंट इज वॉट दिस ऑल द मैथड्स बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ऑल द रीजनरेशन एंड रीहीटिंग मैथड्स द डिजाइन ऑफ द जेट इंजिन इज वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स द डिजाइन ऑफ गेस्ट टर्बाइन इंजिन इज वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स सो दैट इज ऑल्सो ए ड्रॉबैक of using the method to improve the performance of gas turbine engine whenever you are approach you can find out the design and cost of the engine is going to increases that is the main drawback of this types of methods but this types of methods improve the performance parameter like thermal efficiency and net output of the gas turbine engine now the next topic is about factor affecting the thermal efficiency that uh, the thermal efficiency that uh, is of the ideal breton cycle depends upon the pressure ratio that is we already seen the efficiency pressure ratio then specific heat ratio then you know the gas turbine uh, uh, specific heat ratio and thermal efficiency increase of both of this parameter which is also case for the actual cycle so this is the best graph i am going to zoom this one if you see in this graph so you can understand efficiency thermal efficiency versus pressure ratio you can find out the curve is like this so i am going to project in this way so the pressure ratio with the thermal thermal efficiency is in parabolic understand it means that it is not decreases it increases against the pressure ratio so this is the simple diagram graph to understand about the parameter affecting the thermal efficiency now the next new topic in this chapter that is fundamental thrust equation of jet engine so guys everyone is aware we are using the engine propulsion system in the aircraft only and only be of because of thrust requirement of thrust but requirement of the thrust we are get at the end in the terms of reaction force in the forward direction understand in the forward direction reaction force but guys how i am going to calculate mathematically this reaction force so here is very simple uh, equation is given to calculate the Uh, this thrust equation or you can say reaction uh, force of the aircraft engine with mathematically that is total thrust is equal to momentum thrust plus pressure thrust see so guys uh, momentum thrust plus pressure thrust the total thrust contribution is because of momentum thrust and pressure thrust why there is a some reason ask yourself why i already explain you is very simple because of momentum thrust once the gas once the exhaust gas of the nozzle leave into the atmosphere leave into so it produce reaction force in the opposite direction so this phenomena we are uh, calculating with the help of momentum theory 
and that moment with the help of momentum theory we are calculating thrust that is called momentum thrust understand but uh, what is pressure thrust try to understand momentum thrust samajh mein aa gaya we are applying the momentum equation because it the exhaust gas leave into the atmosphere it produce the forward force reaction force that reaction force calculation we are doing with the help of momentum equation understand momentum equation and because of that momentum equation because of that we are calculating the thrust that's the reason is called momentum thrust but what is pressure thrust pressure thrust see whatever the flow is passes through diffuser compressor combustion chamber turbine nozzle passes through all the primary components at the end you can find out uh, there is a pressure variation inlet to outlet p1 to p2 understand and this is called area a this whole engine area a so the whatever the force reaction force is produced because of variation a into delta p a into delta p understand again i am going to write here <coughs> the pressure force that is also called reaction force that is area of our chamber engine that is delta p delta p is what delta p is nothing but p2 minus p1 guys p2 minus p1 so this is one p1 and this one is p2 that is called pressure thrust so guys because of pressure variation at inlet to outlet it's also produce reaction force and because of exhaust gas leaving into the atmosphere is also produce thrust that is called momentum thrust understand summation of this all the thrust f is equal to momentum thrust plus pressure thrust is called total thrust understand is called total thrust so this is called total thrust and fundamental thrust equation of the jet engine is very simple guys is very very simple so guys uh, i hope so you are understand about this thrust equation but uh, those are preparing for gate exam this is not only enough you required to derive the thrust equation to derive okay De derive karna padega to derive the thrust equation so if you want this derivation i will make a separate dedicated video about the derivation of thrust equation but this is whatever i am showing here this is a fundamental ye fundamental hai ye to aana chahiye because many of the students don't know the total thrust jo bhi thrust produce ho raha hai whatever the thrust that is because of what because of momentum and because of pressure variation that's the reason momentum thrust and pressure thrust itna aana chahiye because i find out many of the candidates are fail to give the answer during the interview and also in entrance exam to ye aana hi chahiye so if you want little bit more so i will make so comment in the comment box if you want more about the thrust equation so i will give more because guys uh, the weightage of this thrust equation in gate exam is high you can easily find out one marks question or two marks in each and every paper understand now uh, here i am going to make but uh, this uh, video is going to very lengthy i know this uh, lecture chapter number 1 is goes to more than 2 hours that's the reason i am uh, taking only this part now the next topic is factor affecting the thrust value of jet engine see we already uh, know the thrust equations and the thrust uh, how what is the uh, reason and what is the contribution of total thrust that we already know momentum thrust plus pressure thrust here i am going to write total thrust is equal to momentum thrust plus pressure thrust but there is a factor that is going to reduce this value reduce karega increase karega but which parameters so guys pressure temperature density humidity altitude and forward velocity understand means that is called air speed of the aircraft obviously the temperature pressure the density and temperature is the altitude effect kaun sa effect altitude effect yadi altitude effect hoga to ye sare effect honge if i am going to change the altitude so obviously i am going to find out this all the effects understand so if you know <coughs> the pressure suppose i am talking about the pressure pressure if the altitude is going to change is increase so pressure is also going to increase so altitude is going to increase so temperature also going to increase 
अंडरस्टैंड मतलब डिपेंड्स कि वेर द एयरक्राफ्ट इज फ्लाई एवरी थिंग इज डिपेंड मोस्टली द एयरक्राफ्ट वी कैन फाइंड आउट द एयरक्राफ्ट इज फ्लाइंग इन द इन द लेयर ऑफ टोपोस्फियर द अपर लेयर ऑफ द टोपोस्फियर अदरवाइज द एयरक्राफ्ट इज फ्लाइंग इन स्टार्टोस्फियर अपर लेयर ऑफ द स्टार्टोस्फियर अंडरस्टैंड सो यू कैन फाइंड आउट द प्रेशर वेरिएशन टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन डेंसिटी एंड ह्यूमिडिटी वेरिएशन दिस इज कॉल्ड अल्टीट्यूड वेरिएशन अल्टीट्यूड वेरिएशन अंडरस्टैंड अल्टीट्यूड वेरिएशन इसको बोलते सो बिकॉज ऑफ अल्टीट्यूड बिकॉज ऑफ अल्टीट्यूड वेरिएशन यू कैन फाइंड आउट प्रेशर टेम्परेचर डेंसिटी ह्यूमिडिटी इफेक्ट सो दिस इफेक्ट इज डायरेक्टली इफेक्ट द थ्रस्ट वैल्यू थ्रस्ट वैल्यू डिक्रीज कर सकता है बिकॉज यू कैन फाइंड आउट द थ्रस्ट इक्वेशन दैट इज वेरी सिंपल थ्रस्ट इक्वेशन एम डॉट ए इंटू सी जे माइनस सी आई सी जे माइनस सी आई मास फ्लोरेट एक्जस्ट वेलोसिटी टेम्परेचर आई एम गोइंग टू राइट डाउन लिटल बिट क्लियर एफ इज इक्वल टू एम डॉट ए एम डॉट ए इज द मास फ्लोरेट ऑफ इयर दिस इज वेरी सिंपल एंड एंड सिंप्लीफाइड इक्वेशन सी जे माइनस सी आई यहाँ पे समझो एफ क्या है थ्रस्ट है एम डॉट क्या है मास फ्लोरेट ऑफ एयर जो एंटर हो रहा है इंजिन में सी जे इज द एग्जस्ट वेलोसिटी एग्जस्ट गैस वेलोसिटी एंड सी आई इज द एयर स्पीड ये वाला फॉरवर्ड वेलोसिटी कहते हैं सो गाइज इफ यू एनी चेंजेस इन दिस केस न यू कैन फाइंड आउट इट इज गोइंग टू एफेक्ट द मास फ्लोरेट यदि मास फ्लोरेट डिक्रीज हुआ तो थ्रस्ट डिक्रीज हो जाएगा सिमिलरली Uh, that is going to affect by the cj any effect in the mass flow rate the exhaust velocity is going to decrease because engine required required design mass flow rate yadi design mass flow rate nahi milega guys design mass flow rate nahi milega design design mass flow rate yadi nahi milega decrease hoga so exhaust velocity whatever the produce of the engine that is also decreases understand so very important this all the parameter is interrelated and very important is altitude also kyunki altitude ke wajah se pata chalta hai ki pressure decreases temperature decreases or density decreases if because of altitude this is happening density is also decreases so guys very simple mass flow rate of engine also decreases understand so this everything we are going to uh, maintain with the help of parameters performance parameter that we are going to discuss in detail not in this chapter understand so that is also a little bit big topic and discussion that i'm going to discuss later but if you want to demand this topic say sir how this parameter means how this uh, all this parameter is going to affect in details understand one minute guys affect in details with equations and graph so i will make a separate video बिकॉज ये छोटा टॉपिक नहीं है थोड़ा बड़ा है विद द हेल्प ऑफ इक्वेशन और बहुत सारा है बट गाइज बिकॉज ऑफ गेट एग्जाम डोंट स्कीप दिस वन दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑल्सो ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज अ सेपरेट टॉपिक दैट इज थ्रस्ट एगमेंटेशन मैथड सो गाइज दिस इज ऑल्सो ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक हमें थ्रस्ट एगमेंटेशन मैथड मीन्स हम कैसे थ्रस्ट को बढ़ाएं और क्यों बढ़ाए ओके तो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वट इज थर्स एगमेंटेशन मैथड एंड वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस थर्स एगमेंटेशन मैथड पहला ये क्वेश्चन आना चाहिए सारे कैंडिडेट्स के माइंड में कि वट इज थर्स एगमेंटेशन मैथड एंड वट इज एंड वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ थर्स एगमेंटेशन मैथड सो वेरी इजी आंसर इट इज मैथड ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द थर्स्ट फॉर अ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम आर यू कैन से फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकेंड ऑफ टाइम अंडरस्टैंड The purpose of the uh, thrust augmentation method is to achieve the better take off performance, higher rate of climb, and better performance at any altitude during the compact maneuvering. So, guys, this is very nice explanation. What is thrust augmentation method, and what is the purpose? What is the purpose? So, you guys, is very simple. So, the answer is in the same slide. i hope so you get understand but in this case we can find out the basic types of thrust segmentation method so basic type is of the thrust segmentation method is there after burner method injection method and bleed burn cycle injection of refrigerant refrigerant means mixture of water plus liquid or water plus alcohol depends 
अपॉन द सिस्टम कि कौन सा हम लिक्विड यूज करते हैं वाटर प्लस अल्कोहल और वाटर प्लस सम अदर कुलंट लिक्विड अंडरस्टैंड सो फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द आफ्टर बर्नर इन क्विक आफ्टर बर्नर सो गाइज हियर आई हैव पुटेड वन फिगर वेरी सिंपल फिगर वॉट आई हैव इन माई नोट्स ये फिगर जो है वो मेरे नोट्स का है सो गाइज हियर आई हैव मैंशनड दिस डायग्राम दिस डायग्राम वाई आई मैंशन दिस इज अ इनलेट पार्ट एंड दिस इज अ आउटलेट पार्ट ऑफ द आउटलेट पार्ट ऑफ द गैस टर्बाइन इंजिन सो गाइज दिस दिस पार्ट ये जो है दिस वन इज कॉल्ड आफ्टर बर्नर एंड दिस डक्ट दिस डक्ट इज द आफ्टर बर्नर डक्ट अंडरस्टैंड आफ्टर बर्नर डक्ट कहते हैं इसको द आफ्टर बर्नर डक्ट सो इट इज द मैथड ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द थ्रस्ट आउटपुट ऑफ एन एयरक्राफ्ट पावर प्लांट फॉर ए शॉर्ट इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम बाई बर्निंग ऑफ एडिशनल फ्यूल इन एडिशनल कंबशन चैम्बर और यू कैन से इन आफ्टर बर्नर डक्ट अंडरस्टैंड सो दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड दिस वन सो दिस फिगर इज सेम सो इट इज लॉकेटेड बिटवीन द टर्बाइन एंड नोजल यहाँ पे टर्बाइन है या यहाँ पे नोजल है टर्बाइन एंड नोजल एंड इट इज लॉकेटेड इन बिटवीन द टर्बाइन एंड नोजल एंड यू कैन फाइंड आउट सपोर्टिंग द कम्बोशन ऑल्सो सो द गैस एक्सपांडेड टू द टर्बाइन स्टील हैज द इनफ अमाउंट ऑफ द एयर टू सपोर्ट द फर्दर कम्बोशन गाइज इतना तो एयर है कि सपोज द सपोर्ट द फर्दर कम्बोशन एंड देर फॉर फ्यूल इज एडेड इन टू द गैसिस in the gases and combustion take place at the constant pressure and this gas is expanded through the nozzle which nozzle variable area nozzle kaun sa nozzle hum use karenge see guys very important one thing in after burner method we are supporting further combustion further combustion in after burner duct isko after burner duct kehte it is located between the turbine and nozzle understand so we find out the the turbine the gases passes the turbine still having the enough oxygen to support the uh, further combustion or additional combustion in the after burner duct and this gas is expanded through the nozzle but kaun sa nozzle variable area nozzle guys ye bahut important hai this is a ask, frequently askable question so guys here i am going to explain you variable area nozzle why because suppose This is happening. So the mass flow rate, exit mass flow rate होगा वो क्या हो जाएगा बढ़ जाएगा Because we are supporting additional combustion. पहले से हमारा combustion यहाँ से हो रहा है यहाँ पे हो रहा है ठीक है combustion और ये turbine है But here we are doing again, we are supporting again combustion. तो क्या हो रहा है Mass flow rate बढ़ रहा है exit mass flow rate बढ़ रहा है But nozzle, nozzle design is fixed. वो तो वो तो variable है ही नहीं So that is going to choke. क्या हो जाएगा चोक हो जाएगा नोजल चोक अंडरस्टैंड चोकिंग कंडीशन हो जाएगा सो इफ द नोजल इज चोक्ड गाइज आप लोग को नहीं पता व्हाट इज चोकिंग कंडीशन सो गो थ्रू एंड फाइंड आउट व्हाट इज चोकिंग कंडीशन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू वेरी सिंपल चोकिंग कंडीशन इज द कंडीशन वेर द मास फ्लोरेट इज कॉन्स्टेंट इसके बाद मास फ्लोरेट बढ़ेगा ही नहीं वंस द नोजल इज चोक्ड मीन्स मास फ्लोरेट इज कॉन्स्टेंट अंडरस्टैंड What is happen? Mass flow rate is constant. Then after that, this is not going to increase. So we to compensate these types of issues, we are going to use variable area nozzle. So variable area nozzle is going to compensate the extra mass flow rate and try to eliminate the choking condition of the nozzle. ठीक है? इसलिए variable area nozzle कर use करते हैं. Now the next one is advantages and disadvantages of this after burner method. Why here I am putted? Because it's very important. I find out many of the questions in many of the gate questions. Understand? So let's see what is the advantages. Advantages to increase the rate of climb, to achieve the better uh, take off performance, to improve the performance at any altitude during the compact maneuvering. It is easy to operate and maintain. These all are advantages. Disadvantages to get a additional thrust. About 20 to 30 percent, but it consume 100 percent fuel. So, guys, this is a very big disadvantages. It consume 100 percent of fuels, but it produce 20 to 30 percent thrust. So, this is bad. After burner duct will result in increase the pressure loss. Means result pressure loss when it is not operated. 
when it is not operated so obviously it is look it is uh, act like a uh, ideal duct so that ideal duct causes the pressure loss because in actual condition the flow is passes through the additional duct so it's because of friction it's create a losses additional losses understand additional loss create karega the last one is after burner is in operation so mass flow rate through the nozzle is changed hence the jet engine required variable area nozzle so the guys that is also a disadvantages because variable area nozzle is very complex design very difficult to design very manufacturing uh, cost is also very high jitna zyada complexity hoga utna zyada cost hoga utna zyada manufacturing complexity badhegi understand <coughs> is very simple so guys this is the disadvantages but because of this advantages this disadvantages you can ignore you can ignore because the whatever we are getting this advantages this is very useful advantage ye bahut useful advantages hai because of that you can ignore ye jo bhi hai disadvantage isko ignore kar sakte ho but is little bit costly is high because variable area nozzle so those aircraft employed after burner method so it's required variable area nozzle compulsory mandatory understand now second method injection of refrigerant so injection of refrigerant refrigerant we are using water plus alcohol so this is a very simple figure i am going to zoom this figure so you can guys are understand so in this figure very simple figure i have mentioned so guys in this figure diffuser compressor combustion chamber turbine and nozzle understand so we are injecting the water and uh, water at the entry of compressor and we are injecting the alcohol at the entry of combustion chamber so guys in this method we are injecting injecting the water and alcohol at the entry of compressor and combustion chamber why we are injecting let's try to understand we are injecting in this method we are injecting suitable mixture of water and alcohol at the compressor and entry by means of series of spray nozzle because it increase the thrust due to the cooling effect guys this is very important kaise thrust increase kar raha hai because due to the cooling effect water increase the mass flow rate because it is evaporate and alcohol also burn as a fuel in the combustion so it is mentioned the factor which contributes to increase the thrust the evaporation cooling water kya hoga evaporate ho jayega so mass flow rate is increases second increase the mass flow rate kyunki water and alcohol alcohol is going to burn as a fuel understand external fuel and additional fuel you can say and water is turn into and vaporize and turn into the mass flow rate additional mass flow rate so obviously automatically it increase the mass flow rate and third one alcohol burn as a fuel understand so fuel consumption is also less so guys because of this method it increase the thrust because we already know the thrust equation i know f is equal to m dot a cj minus ci understand i already explained you in the previous cj minus ci if you are increasing the mass flow rate anyhow of the mass flow rate of air so everything is going to increase understand so this is a very simple guys very very simple to understand so this is a injection method now the last one is bleed burn cycle guys uh, this is very simple method bleed burn cycle in bleed burn cycle it is very i am going to zoom in this figure so in this figure we are going to use this same jet engine this same jet engine but guys we are using auxiliary combustion chamber you can see ye jo bahar dikh raha hai na is called auxiliary combustion chamber so this is a simple jet engine what we know diffuser compressor combustion chamber turbine and nozzle but in this case we are using one additional things that is auxiliary combustion chamber dono side dekho and also we are using auxiliary nozzle isko auxiliary nozzle kehte hain and this is called auxiliary combustion chamber so we are using two extra component in this case in order to do the further combustion <coughs> so in bleed burn cycle we are supporting further combustion in the additional combustion chamber additional combustion chamber means auxiliary combustion chamber 
we are supporting additional co combustion chamber uh, co combustion process in the auxiliary combustion and expanding in the auxiliary nozzle so guys with the help of this we find out extra thrust we find out extra mass flow rate and extra thrust so with the help of bleed burn cycle we are able to produce extra thrust understand so this is three method is called thrust augmentation method which method thrust augmentation method now the thrust augmentation method uh, this figure is very nice figure the uh, altitude versus time uh, suppose the, if you see this case with thrust uh, uh, with after burner you can find out uh, it's required less time to reach but in case of without after burner you can find out without after burner you can find out it's required more time so with after burner save this much time understand that's the reason we are ignoring many of the disadvantages of the thrust augmentation method because of this reason <coughs> so this is about the th now next topic is about classification of jet engine so guys the uh, classification of jet engine is going to classified or uh, about the air breathing engine and the non air breathing engine that we are using as a propulsion system in aircraft so let's see here i have mentioned one tree uh, to classify the jet engine so it is classified into the two air breathing engine and non air breathing engine in non air breathing engine you can find out that it is a category of rocket and we already know there is no any moving part in rocket propulsion system in rocket you can find out the types of rocket is liquid propellant rocket solid propellant rocket and a hybrid propellant rocket so non air breathing engine is a category of different types of rocket engine now if you see about the air breathing engine there is a two uh, category of air breathing engine one is jet engine and second is a reciprocating engine reciprocating engine <coughs> is a category of piston engine that is that we are calling positive displacement engine understand so that is reciprocating engine <coughs> in history it is not like that we are not used a reciprocating engine in uh, history we already used but we find out less power output um, for uh, for our long run that's the reason we are using nowadays gas turbine engine so in in jet engine in case of jet engine you can find out there is a two category gas turbine engine and non gas turbine engine gas turbine engine means the engine possess or engine having moving components like compressor and turbine if you see for non gas turbine engine it means it does not possess any moving component like compressor and turbine so that is the category of ramjet scramjet and pulse jet engine so this is a uh, non gas turbine engine in gas turbine engine you can find out very important uh, aircraft engine that is turbojet engine turboprop engine turbo fan engine turbo shaft engine so guys this tree uh, of this classification is very very important so everyone should aware about this uh, classification then it is easy to categorize which types of the engines we are learning understand now <coughs> so now we are going to see <coughs> of all about gas turbine engine the types of gas turbine engine we are going to see one by one <coughs> so first a turbojet engine in turbojet engine uh, we know there is a five primary components intake compressor combustion chamber turbine and nozzle that we already discussed what is the function so this is a basic schematic diagram of a turbojet engine and everyone should aware about this this is a very pure and simple turbojet engine understand we are not using any afterburner and all okay so this is very basic uh, uh, diagram of turbojet engine so in this case the important is about uh, whatever the conversion we know the fuel fuel energy means chemical energy that we are converting into the mechanical energy in the terms of turbine work understand mechanical energy means turbine work that turbine work is to convert or you can say it is used to run the compressor so that's the reason whole gas turbine engine is running on the second is about 100% thrust uh, produced with the help of uh, uh, nozzle then operating mach number you can find out 1 to 2 
बट सुपर सोनिक एयर काफ्ट यूजिंग द टर्बो जेट इंजिन इट्स रन द मैक नंबर इज नियर अबाउट वन टू फाइव अंडरस्टैंड बट इन कैटेगरी मिड कैटेगरी ऑफ एयर क्राफ्ट द मैक नंबर इज वन टू टू अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस इज अबाउट द टर्बो जेट इंजिन आफ्टर डैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द सेकेंड टाइप्स ऑफ गैस टर्बाइन इंजिन दैट इज टर्बो प्रॉप इंजिन टर्बो प्रॉप इंजिन सो दिस टर्बो प्रॉप इंजिन इज मेनली वी आर यूजिंग लो स्पीड एयर क्राफ्ट एप्लीकेशन that is the, the mac number of aircraft is uh, near about 0.65 this is a typical value guys this types of value is askable in the gate exam understand so always remember so in turbo prop engine you can find out or uh, mostly all the component is similar like jet engine turbo jet engine like uh, intake then compressor combustion chamber then turbine then exhaust means nozzle but one extra component you can find out that is called that is called propeller understand so guys very important is uh, this engine turbo prop engine uh, using only one additional component that is prop uh, propeller otherwise everything is same what we already seen in the case of in the case of turbo jet understand this one in the case of turbo jet this one understand everything is same only we are attach one propeller here we are attaching only here we are attaching only propeller so this is a turbo prop engine so the very interesting thing is that in case of turbo prop engine the basic very frequently are basic question askable that is why we are using the propeller understand so propeller the function of the propeller is to produce additional thrust try to understand very very simple answer because is a very askable question uh, what is the function of uh, uh, propeller in the turbo prop engine so student giving the answer the simple answer is like sir it produce thrust so that is not a correct answer you can give the answer is like sir the function of the propeller in turbo prop engine is to produce additional thrust that's the reason guys because of this if you see because of this the total thrust suppose i am going to talk about the total thrust of this engine so that is propeller thrust plus momentum thrust plus pressure thrust understand Pre uh, propeller thrust momentum thrust and pressure thrust this momentum thrust and pressure thrust th that we already know that is a pure jet engine thrust but one propeller thrust is added because of this propeller so guys there is a advantages and disadvantages of this propeller so let's see that we are going to discuss later in this lecture itself but later slide we are going to discuss all the gas turbine engine advantages and disadvantages so don't worry we are going to discuss but first try to understand the basic things about the turbo prop engine so in turbo prop engine <coughs> the first is about 20 to 25 percent of thrust produced by the nozzle nozzle understand so guys uh, whatever here i am giving in the terms of percentage or some value that is typical value i find out in the book the second is about 75 to 80 percent of the thrust by the propeller then operating mach number operating mach number is 0.4 to 0.5 so guys see here it is used for low speed aircraft understand but subsonic aircraft the sub, uh, mac number operating mac number is 0.8 to point oh, sorry 0.1 to 0.8 understand so it is go up to 0.8 that is uh, i think uh, is a very fa uh, fastest aircraft uh, those aircraft employed turbo prop engine very interesting fact is about this guys momentum thrust because of nozzle because of this nozzle that is producing only 20 to 25 but most of the thrust is produced by the propeller that's a reason propulsive efficiency of turbo prop uh, turbo prop engine is very very high propulsive efficiency of aircraft those having turbo prop engine the efficient turbo uh, propeller efficiency is very high what is wow, what is uh, propeller efficiency try to understand i'm go i'm going to give very simple example suppose aircraft is uh, running on the ground in order to take a take off understand if the aircraft having the capability 
the wing having the capability to take the uh, sufficient lift to lift off the whole body means the that is defining the propulsive efficiency of the aircraft in case of turboprop engine the propeller is producing enough thrust that enough thrust giving a uh, enough momentum of the flow across the wing of aircraft so that's the reason turboprop aircraft is taking a takeoff very easily it's required very less runway understand but turbojet engine and turbofan uh, fan engine aircraft required more runway means long runway to take a takeoff operation so it means that the propulsive efficiency of turboprop engine is very very nice understand so <clears throat> now the second one is about the turbofan engine in actually turbofan engine is a hybrid engine what is is a hybrid engine it is a combination it is a combination of turbojet engine and turboprop engine understand so in this case is important 20 to 30 per, 40% thrust produced by the nozzle and 60 to 80% thrust produced by the fan and operating mach number is 0.4 to 0.8 and high subsonic aircraft operating mach number is 0.3 to 0.8 guys remember this value because i find out the there is a questions asking in the gate exam is a very important so this is about the turbofan engine now turbo shaft engine turbo shaft engine is basically we are using in the helicopter engine understand helicopter propulsion system so kinetic energy is converted into the shaft power and 100% thrust we are obtaining or produced by the shaft operating mach number is 0.4 to 0.8 and high speed subsonic subsonic helicopter is 0.3 to 0.8 understand so this is the features these are features of turbo shaft aircraft understand and it is turbo shaft is only we can find out is used in the helicopter in order to shaft mechanisms now we are going to see the advantages and disadvantages of each types of engine so first one is about turbojet engine so i already uh, shown this figure in on the previous slide is very simple we are going to see the advantages and disadvantages so first advantages of the turbo shaft engine is low frontal area hence it produce less drag means turbo jet engine possess a low frontal area so it produce less drag if the frontal area is large it produce more drag because the flow is passes through the body if your shape of nose is more or blunt shape of the nose or blunt shape of the body so it produce more drag second is a suitable for long distance flight at higher altitude and higher speed then third one is reheat is possible to increase the thrust we already seen this feature this feature is called to optimize the performance of the breton cycle or you can say gas turbine engine so reheat process is possible understand the fourth one is a low weight per unit thrust at design speed and design altitude means it possess high thrust as compared to the weight of the aircraft so that is is very big advantages of the turbojet engine and you can basically find out the turbojet engine in fighter aircraft because turbojet engine producing very high thrust and it is already mentioned in the advantages it is suitable for very high speed operation high speed operation high speed and high altitude operation so in military aircraft it is very required and second you know the military aircraft having the low weight but required high thrust understand so this is very good advantages and we can find out the turbojet engine widely we are using in the military aircraft but also we are using in commercial aircraft if you aware about that a small category of aircraft that is business jet private jet that is called private jet so in that category you can find out turbojet engine but turbojet engine is very costly in case of commercial aircraft because uh because it consume more fuel and also we are operating non off design condition understand at low altitude sometime at low speed but we already know the turbojet engine is only suitable for higher altitude and higher speed 
बट इन केस ऑफ प्राइवेट जेट एंड इन केस ऑफ मिलिट्री एयरक्राफ्ट वी आर नॉट बॉर्डर अबाउट द फ्यूल कंजप्शन एंड फ्यूल कॉस्ट अंडरस्टैंड सो दैट्स अ रीजन वी आर यूजिंग द टर्बो जेट इंजिन इन प्राइवेट जेट द पैसेंजर इज रेडी टू बॉर्डर और पैसेंजर इज रेडी टू पे ऑफ द हाई मनी फॉर द टिकट सो देर इज नो एनी इश्यू इन द केस ऑफ प्राइवेट जेट अंडरस्टैंड Disadvantages, if you see, the first point is about a propulsive efficiency and thrust. Propulsive efficiency and thrust are lower at lower speed. That is off design condition. I already told you. It the aircraft equipped with the turbojet engine required very high speed operation. Then it pr produce required propulsive efficiency and required thrust. The second one is specific fuel consumption is very high as at low speed. and low altitude operation so obviously it is not suitable that is off design condition the third point it is not economical for short distance flight obviously the the fourth one is long runway is required due to slower acceleration means during the landing operation it's required very long runway in order to slow down the aircraft because the aircraft equipped with the turbo jet engine the speed and acceleration is very very high so we required very long runway now i hope so you guys are understand this advantages and disadvantages of turbo jet engine now we are going to talk about the next jet engine that is turbo prop engine i already told you the turbo prop engine is similar engine but it possesses only the extra external component that is propeller otherwise it is similar like turbojet engine so let's see the advantages and disadvantages <coughs> so first advantage is is on account of high thrust at low speed take off roll is short and required short runway i already told you the propulsive efficiency of turbo prop engine is very high uh, because propeller only and only because of propeller so during the take off it required very short runway in order to take the take off operation then third one is thrust reversal is easily achieved with the variable pitch of the propeller means the propeller propeller also we can find out in the market there is a different types of the propellers are available fixed pitch then variable pitch so feather pitch geometrical pitch so there is a different types of propeller available so with the help of propeller variable pitch propeller we can change the pitch of the propeller blade and we can produce the reverse thrust that is called a negative thrust understand that is where we require this uh, rev uh, thrust reversal we required this thrust reversal function during the landing operation because during the landing we know the speed and acceleration of the aircraft body is very very high so we required very long runway in order to slow down so that's the reason we are using the feature thrust reversal in some of the aircraft we are using the mechanical thrust reversal component and in turbo prop engine we are using this we are getting this feature thrust reversal with the help of propeller but guys the strength of the blade of propeller is is required enough otherwise blade is going to destroy the load of axial load and centrifugal load uh, is acting on the centrifugal uh, acting on the propeller blade is very very high again i am repeating the centrifugal load and axial load of the air flow that is very high uh, acting on the propeller blade so guys is the strength and material what we are using of the propeller blade that is also a uh, important parameters let's see for disadvantages disadvantages it is suitable for lower speed and lower altitude then why it is disadvantage is because uh, mostly we required higher speed and higher altitude but here mentioned lower speed and lower altitude that's the reason it is disadvantage is but in some in some of the application we don't required high speed and high altitude operation in some of the case we required low speed operation high low altitude operation so turbo prop is suitable for that operation a large speed reduction box is required to derive the propeller at the optimum speed otherwise what happen the speed of the propeller is go above the permissible limit so the propeller blade is going to stall the blade 
of the propeller is similar like wing the propeller bla blade is what propeller blade is called also called wing aircraft wing is similar like a wing so propeller blade is a small aircraft wing you can say because the whole propeller blade is made up of airfoil section if you cut anywhere at any section of the propeller blade you can find out airfoil shape understand it is possible to it possesses large frontal area hence large drag because of uh, reduction gearbox because of uh, propeller the frontal area or frontal nose of the aircraft of turbo prop engine is very big understand that's the reason the profile drag or you can say the drag parameter is high the last point is it possesses high weight per unit thrust understand that is a uh, you can say advantage is also because it possesses high weight to uh, unit thrust if you compare the uh, turbojet engine that is uh, vice versa but in case of turbo prop engine the weight is high as compared to the thrust so this is a uh, disadvantages of turbo prop engine <coughs> now the last about turbo fan engine so this is a turbo fan engine in turbo fan engine we are using fan understand fan uh, and the and the rest of the component you can find out this component it is similar like turbojet engine you can find out intake compressor combustion chamber turbine and and nozzle it possesses only one extra component that is that is fan fan the function of the fan in this case it is used to divide the main stream suppose this is a main stream of the flow is enter so the this this blade of this fan is dividing two stream of the flow this stream is called this stream is called cold jet isko kya bolenge cold jet bolenge cold jet stream and the second stream is going to pass into the main core of the engine इसके अंदर जाएगा मेन कोर ऑफ द इंजिन लाइक डिफ्यूजर कंप्रेशर कंबशन चैम्बर सो दैट स्ट्रीम ऑफ द फ्लो इज कॉल्ड हॉट जेट क्या बोलेंगे उसको हॉट जेट दैट इज कॉल्ड हॉट जेट सो गाइज देर इज अ वन रेशियो आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू सो बीटा इज द बाईपास रेशियो एम डॉट सी कोल्ड जेट अपॉन हॉट जेट कोल्ड जेट अपॉन हॉट जेट इज कॉल्ड बाईपास रेशियो बीटा इज द बाईपास रेशियो बीटा इज इक्वल टू एम डॉट सी अपॉन एम डॉट एच दिस इज कॉल्ड बाईपास रेशियो वाई एम शोइंग वाई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग बाईपास रेशियो बिकॉज दिस इज ऑल्सो ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर यू कैन इफ यू गो टू डू द स्टडी डीपली अबाउट द परफॉर्मेंस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ टर्बो जेट इन टर्बो फैन इंजिन सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड so guys i hope so you guys are understand so the one stream is enter into the auxiliary duct this is auxiliary duct and this is main core of the engine so one stream enter into the auxiliary duct and expand in the auxiliary nozzle so it produce separate thrust so this thrust is called cold thrust again i am going to write down the flow is enter into this auxiliary duct and expand in the auxiliary nozzle so it produce cold thrust by the cold jet thrust m f is f into m dot c thrust produced by the cold jet but whatever the flow stream enter into the main core of the engine and uh, expand through the main nozzle so this thrust because of hot jet m dot h so total thrust in case of turbo fan engine m dot f into m dot c plus f m dot h understand so this is this is called total thrust equation of turbo fan engine so guys this is a turbo fan engine very basic and function is also similar uh, like a turbo jet engine it possesses only fan guys this fan fan is used to divide the main stream of the flow जो भी मेन स्ट्रीम होता है उसको डिवाइड करता है कोल्ड जेट में एंड हॉट जेट में दैट्स इट सो इट प्रोड्यूस टू थ्रस्ट वन इज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टोटल थ्रस्ट इज कोल्ड जेट एंड हॉट जेट नाउ वी कैन सी द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस 
so the first point it possess shorter take off roll due to the high thrust and low speed at low speed it also possible to produce the high thrust so that is the main feature that is the main feature of the turbofan engine comparatively very silent engine it is very silent engine if you compare turbojet engine and turboprop engine it is very silent engine the third one the high bypass ratio engine will reduce the air pollution and also at a given th uh, thrust the engine burn a less fuel so guys this is the advantages of this bypass ratio that's the reason i am explaining beta is equal to m dot c upon m dot h that is a bypass ratio i am able to increase this bypass ratio so i am able to increase the uh, decrease the fuel consumption so very cost effective and also we are able to reduce the air pollution understand so this is very important this advantage is the engine is heavier and more complicated as compared to the turbojet engine because we are using the bypass duct bypass duct uh, and uh, in turbojet engine we are using only the core jet the the second second disadvantage is separate thrust reversal is required for hot jet and cold jet means suppose if you are uh, want to use the thrust reversal so there is a separate separate uh, required there is a separate separate thrust reversal component is required understand because we can't install only the uh, one thrust reversal component because the we are producing the thrust not only with the help of main nozzle we are also producing the thrust with the help of auxiliary nozzle so it's create a problem so that's the reason we required separate thrust reversal in both of the case auxiliary nozzle and main nozzle the last one is it possess larger frontal area hence more drag so this is a very common because of fan the frontal fan if i am going to show you this frontal fan because of this frontal fan the frontal area of the engine is very high if it is high so drag is high understand and i already explained you the turbo fan engine is the hybrid engine hybrid engine it is the combination of turbo jet engine plus turbo prop engine so it is a combination and nowadays the very frequently askable question the nowadays the commercial aircraft using only and mostly means you, you can find out 90% commercial aircraft you using turbofan engine widely we are using this turbofan engine in the commercial aircraft passenger aircraft understand because is very very effective at low altitude and high altitude and very effective at a low velocity and high velocity means it's play a very good role at any altitude and any velocity and also very good in the case of thrust it produce high thrust whenever required it produce less thrust whenever required so it always match with the design condition understand design condition ko match karke chalta hai so it is very nice uh, uh, engine but uh, <coughs> many of the students also asking sir which engine which gas turbine engine is best engine so my, the answer is very simple all gas turbine engine means i am going to show you all gas turbine engine this one all the all gas turbine engine guys are very very this all gas turbine engine is may be turbo jet engine turbo prop engine turbo fan engine turbo shaft all are important it's depend upon the requirement of aircraft it give the advantages and disadvantages because of his unique function all four gas turbine engine is superior i hope so you guys are understand about the classification of jet engine and uh, is very simple and advantages and disadvantages also very simple so here the whole chapter fundamental of gas turbine engine i have explained in very very simple manner but any candidates having any doubt related to any topic you can ask me the question in the comment box here i have taken little bit fast to complete this chapter because the chapter number 1 in aircraft propulsion 2 that is very lengthy here you require to go little bit depth if you are preparing for gate 
that's the reason i told you if you want any topic detail video so i will make a separate we dedicated video only for you guys so i hope so guys this whole chapter is uh, understandable and if you find any doubt let me know through the comment box so guys thank you for watching my this uh, video thank you so much